Hello students, welcome back to my channel. Today we will continue with Act 3, Scene 2. In our previous video, we had stopped at this particular line. By this light thou shalt be my lieutenant monster or my standard. So, we will begin today from here. Now, in our previous video, right towards the beginning of uh, Act 3, Scene 2, we have seen that Stefano, Trinculo and Caliban, they were all extremely intoxicated and in an intoxicated state, Stefano bestows different titles to Caliban. And while doing that, he declares that, uh, that monster, that is Caliban, will become his lieutenant or his standard. Standard means his flag bearer. And I had mentioned in the previous video as well that the main element of comedy comes from the fact that Stefano completely forgets his position in the society. He completely forgets that he is only Alonso's butler. He almost assumes the role of a ruler on this particular island. So, this adds uh, to the comic element and the way he bestows titles is also used in order to provide a kind of comic relief after the sensitive and almost poetic scene of Act 3, Scene 1. So, let us get started. Trinculo responds to uh, to Stefano's behavior, Stefano's declaration, Trinculo retorts, your lieutenant if you list. So Trinculo says that if you want the monster to be your lieutenant, he can be that if you list means if you like. He is no standard. So he says, but he will not be able to become a standard. He will not be able to become your flag bearer because he is so intoxicated that he is hardly being able to stand. His legs cannot bear him. So how will he become a flag bearer? He could hardly stand. So we already understand that to what extent they were drunk. They were in a completely intoxicated state. Stefano, we will not run Monsia Monster. So Stefano uh, does not pay much heed to Trinco, uh, Trinculo's words and he says that he can definitely, in a way, he is trying to indicate that the monster can definitely be a flag bearer. He will not have to run, so he, can, he will be able to stand. Trinculo. Trinculo again adds, he says he will not only be able to run, he will nor go neither. Nor go neither means he will also not be able to walk. He is in such a state, he will not also be able to walk. But you will lie like dogs. And he says he will only be able to lie down like dogs and yet say nothing neither. And he says that he will also not be able to speak anything. This is what Trinculo says. Trinculo says neither he will run, nor he will walk, nor he will be able to speak anything. Uh, Trinculo says the uh, makes this particular comment about Caliban. Now Stefano is somehow trying to prove Trinculo uh, wrong. Uh, they are, they have started a mild disagreement. They are having a mild disagreement between each other. Uh, and he, Stefano is now bent to prove Trinculo wrong. So he urges uh, Caliban to finally speak. He says, Mooncalf, speak once in thy life. So Stefano says, Mooncalf is monster. He says, speak once in your life. If you have to speak once, then speak now. Once in your life, if thou beest a good moon calf. If you are a good monster, you will speak now. And Caliban answers, how does thy, uh, thy honor? And Caliban is treating him like his master, like someone who is extremely important. And he says, uh, how are you, my honor? 
uh, how does thy honor how are you at present my honor let me lick thy shoe so he is ready to serve he says let me lick your shoe i will not serve him he is not valiant caliban though he was not speaking he could hear trinculo's words and he somehow took offense and he says that trinculo is not someone whom i will serve he is not valiant he is not someone who is brave so i will not serve trinculo at all trinculo trinculo now is offended at this statement uh, mainly because it comes from caliban whom he <coughs> considers to be a kind of subhuman so trinculo is extremely enraged by this comment he says thou liest you are lying most ignorant monster you know nothing you are ignorant <coughs> excuse me i am in case to jostle a constable so he says i am so brave that i can jostle i am ready to fight an officer of law constable is an officer of law i can do that as well i am so brave why thou debauched fish debauched here means wasted or debauched so he is a wasted fish this is a reference to what again it is a reference to act 2 scene 2 where initially trinculo assumed that this is that caliban was some kind of a fish because he smelled of fish so he says you are a wasted fish thou was there ever man a covered that hath drunk so much sack as i today and trinculo says was there any covered who had the courage to drink so much wine as i have done today so he is trying to assert himself he is trying to prove that he is extremely brave wilt thou tell a monstrous lie and trinculo says will you tell this monstrous this outrageous lie Uh, being but half a fish and half a monster and he says that you are only half a fish you are half a fish and you are half a monster again indicating uh, to uh, indicating that perhaps uh, caliban is misshapen perhaps his physical structure is uh, somehow not similar to them so it is again an indication of that so we will keep that in mind but trinculo is extremely outraged and he lashes out at caliban lo how he mocks me caliban lo is an expression of anger he almost like uh, a child almost like a child he complains this entire thing to stefano and says look master how he mocks me how he has mocked me wilt thou let him my lord so caliban says will you allow him to behave like this with me in your presence my lord lord quoth he trinculo now again mocks stefano and says he says lord so trinculo says who is lord again it is a reminder of the fact that stefano is not a lord he is only a butler and he has been almost referred to as lord as royalty so trinculo uses this to mock that a monster should be such a natural and trinculo says this monster is a natural he is fool natural here means that he is such a fool that he calls a butler a lord so it is a reference to their social standing caliban lo lo again and he is again trying to draw stefano's attention and he says again he has mocked me again he has called me a fool bite him to death i prithee so caliban now uh, seeks revenge he requests stefano to punish him and he says bite him to death i pray so he is you will note that caliban has stayed for such a long time with prospero 
he believes that he somehow believes that since prospero could conjure up some magic and could torment him all in different ways he could uh, torment caliban uh, caliban uh, towards the beginning of act 1 scene 2 or act 2 scene 2 towards the beginning where you have the monologue of caliban you will see that how he says that how Cali uh, how prospero can punish him so he he believes that stefano also has similar powers and who so he requests stefano to punish trinculo stefano trinculo keep a good tongue in your head keep a good tongue in your head means be careful watch what you are going to say be careful with what you say if you prove a mutineer so he says if you prove to be a rebel if you question my authority if you insult me in this manner or my monster in this manner the next tree the next tree is an indication that trinculo will be hanged like a rebel to the next tree mutineers or rebels were in those days hanged so trinculo will also be hanged like a rebel the poor monsters my subject so again stefano stefano maybe could be because of his intoxicated state could be because they are on this uninhabited island that trinculo uh, sorry stefano completely forgets his position in society and he assumes the role of the king and he says that this monster is my subject and he shall not suffer indignity he will not be insulted since he is my uh he is my subject caliban i thank my noble lord and he is very happy to receive this kind of treatment from stefano because he despises prospero and prospero does not treat him properly and once he receives this treatment from stefano he is extremely grateful wilt thou please to hearken once again to the suit i made to thee and caliban takes this opportunity again and he says will you be pleased will you stefano be pleased to hearken hearken means hear my request once again he had initially made a request he had initially offered his services to uh, stefano in act 2 scene 2 and he had also spoken briefly about his master and had said he is a tyrant so now again he wishes to make his request he wishes to remind uh stefano about this and he is now preparing to uh put forward his request stefano marry will i marry here is referring to a mild oath he refers to the virgin mary and he uh he refers to the virgin mary and he says will i that is i will hear your request kneel and repeat it he says kneel before me as if he now assumes the role of the judge as the all powerful ruler and he now asks caliban to kneel in front of him and to repeat his request i will stand and so shall trinculo and he says we will both here we will both be standing since you are my subject and you will request you please kneel in for in front of me and request what you need to request a couple of things here we need to keep in mind i have referred to the social standing and how this can evoke some kind of comedy and we have already spoken about it i have already referred to it several times there is also a sort of physical comedy that one can find because these uh, characters are intoxicated and perhaps on stage while they act their gestures and body movements are such that create a kind of physical comedy so these on these two levels these this particular scene can be taken as a comic scene and it also appeals to the crude humor of the commoners a uh, crude human of the uh, humor of the common man who were present in the theater to enjoy these plays because shakespeare had uh, had every element for each section of his uh, audience he was he entertained not only the nobility but also the common uh, the common men who were present there 
as groundlings and the placement of the scene is also something that uh, you all as students should note it has been used as a contrast it has been used right after the delicate passages and the delicate scenes of uh, scenes that we read through that we saw in act 3 scene 1 act 3 scene 1 is uh, placed somewhere in the middle and the characters since tempest uh, temp in tempest we find so many characters so many uh, activity taking place at the same time so uh, it has been intentionally done by the playwright that these characters are brought in at regular intervals so that we do not forget about one character or one uh, one segment uh, segment of characters completely so that we are co constantly aware of what is happening and it also brings in a lot of variation first we have uh, first we had the delicate love passage then we have crude humor then again in act 3 scene 3 we see the noble party the royal party and that is how the scene or uh, the play continues so these are the things that you need to keep in mind you can make a note of these points as well you can uh, you can stop the video or pause the vid video and note down these pointers if you wish if you like my work please like share and subscribe to my channel and if you have any doubts please post it in the comment section. I will again meet you in the next video. Thank you.